not much for cheaters, but actually today I'm going to show you how we're going to replace a fuel pump in this 2001 Mercury Sable without dropping the fuel tank. It's kind of a cheater way to do it. Sometimes you can actually remove the back seat and there's a door, you unbolt it and you get to the fuel pump. Today we're going to make that door and I have a grinder to do it. Now, before everyone freaks out on me for using a grinder right next to a gas tank, just realize it's not the gas tank itself. It's actually just the cowling over top of the gas tank. The gas tank is sealed from the inside for sparks and all kinds of things like that. Otherwise, if it wasn't, you might actually blow up when someone throws their cigarette butt out the window in front of you. In here, you'll find that if you just push the seat back at the base of it, it unhooks and pops up. So just push in there and pull up. The whole seat comes out. There's usually a bunch of this fireproofing stuff here. Just pull it back, kind of tuck it out of the way. The next step, of course, is to go collect all the change out from uh, underneath the seat and then go buy yourself an ice cream cone while you're watching more Cousin Dan videos. Now you need to know where to cut. So you need to pull out your phone or your computer and, uh, of course, show off your technology and say, Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, man. Google image search a gas tank for this car, 2001 Mercury Sable fuel tank. And then you look at a picture of it for the replacement and you say, okay, here's where the top opening is where the fuel pump's gonna be inside. So you need to say that's like what, two thirds over on the tank. This is gonna be two thirds over in the car. And so I have to measure from here to that spot on the tank, know how big the tank is, measure that underneath the car, and then measure from here to that spot on the back seat and start cutting out a hole. So after some proper internet sleuthing and uh, some measurement, I found that this area right here that I drew with a Sharpie is the area I need to cut out. So uh, now I need to just go ahead and get the grinder and do it. However, right now is the really, really inten intensely important part. Make sure you only cut through this piece of metal. Don't go into the tank that's right below it. Just graze it with your grinder, go real shallow, get to the point where you're almost through it and then punch it through. That way you don't actually go through. You do have like half an inch of, of room, but don't use it, you know, just don't. And then, then just stay safe and then don't blow yourself up. Okay, now uh, put on hearing protection and go for it. And try not to burn holes in your leather. So you make your cuts and punch it through. You should be able to just break the thing out. Use a, a nail clippers you find underneath the seat to pull it out. That's going to be there. Oh, look at that. Boom, the top of the fuel pump, just like that right there without dropping the tank. Now just change your fuel pump. And there were actually squirrels living on this one, hiding acorns and chewing up other acorns on top of this fuel pump for some reason. Maybe they like gas fumes. Next, you wanna take a broken flat screwdriver, doesn't have to be broken, and line it up with that circle and tap it. And it will walk the lid of the fuel tank out. There we go. Break the ring free, and wiggle loose the rest of the fuel system. Now you can walk that out and change the pump. You're going to have to disconnect the fuel lines to get it out, and Ford and Mercury make these little clips. You basically just push them from one side and then pull on the tab and it comes out, and you pull the, the tubes off. Now that you have the thing out, you just take those three screws out. This separates, the motor just pulls right out of there, um, but it's flush. Uh, it it's, it's automatically seals into uh, a pickup tube. Just stick something in that little line right there. It releases the electrical connection, and there's your motor. Throw the new one in, put it back together. I, pu I put it in, I plugged it in, and I put the ring back on and closed it down. Put these two things back on, put the snaps back in. And now, I'm going to put the key in and check. Try it again. I hear the pump working, it looks like it's just fine. Let's try to start the car. 
And that's where my camera died. So, because I had to give the car back to the owner, I am now just going to explain to you what happened. It works. The car starts totally fine. We fixed the problem. So, after the point where the camera cut off, all you need to do is take that piece of sheet metal, drill two holes on each side, or however many you feel is necessary based on the size of piece you cut out, drill corresponding holes on the part that's still attached to the car, cut out some little strips of sheet metal, drill holes in those, sheet metal screw the thing down, bridging that line that was cut to take that piece out. Done. It's like it never happened, except for obviously the piece that uh, was once ripped out of the back seat of my car. But that doesn't matter because you have to put the seat back anyway to cover it up. And come on, let's be real. It's like a 2003 Mercury Sable with 200 some thousand miles on it. What are we really sacrificing here? Not a whole lot. So if you have a question, please leave it in the comment section. If you have a comment, leave it in the comment section. And thank you for watching. I really appreciate that. And if you liked it, feel free to subscribe to the Cousin Dan. Oh,